Are we live? We're live. We're live! Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. Uh, this is our honest review section of our stream, where we like to talk about what we liked, what we didn't necessarily care for, and what we would change if given the opportunity uh, for the game. Uh, we just did Dumpster Brawl. We did the spotlight of that. Guys, go check it out, either on Twitch VOD or on uh, YouTube when we put this up there. Mm -hmm. But introductions first. I'm Matt. I'm Josh. And I'm Anne. So we, as I just said, did Dumpster Brawl. Uh, Josh, can you give a brief rundown of the game for everyone? I lost twice. Well, a, a brief rundown <laughs> of the actual game. But yes, you did lose twice. Congratulations. Um, it's a set collecting game with a dice roll mechanic that you used to brawl people with crowbars and trash can lids. Yep, and you play as various uh, dumpster diving animals, and we'll get into that in just a minute. But so first we're going to talk about what we liked about the game. So... And you were the most recent winner out of the group. Uh, so what was, what were, what are some of the things that you particularly cared for in this game? I always comment on the art. Mm -hmm. And I thought the art here was very, uh, very cute, very fitting. Mm -hmm. It's, um, the game, what's the age ranges on the game? Let me look at the box. It's a very family friendly game, and I. It says I... 13 plus, but that's probably for safety reasons. Yeah. Ah, uh, don't eat the dice. Yeah, don't eat the dice. Um, no, I, th I thought the cartoony art was super cute. It's a very light, fun theme. I mean, you're dumpster diving. Absolutely. You couldn't be, you couldn't put serious art. I mean, you could. It be you could be awkward, I think. Yeah, but... awkward's a good way to put it. But it's cute. I like the attention to detail. I like how part of the game mechanics are that each character sheet that you get, you have a special uh, piece of trash assigned to you for your collection set, and you get a bonus where you only need to collect two instead of three to make the set. And I like how things were themed uh, very well. So for example, the last character I played was Raby Ratafeller, and her special item was a coffee cup. And she's from, you know, she's a Rockefeller, so she's from New York City. She's a Ratafeller. She's a Ratafeller. Yes. But I like, you know, you, you got New York City that they're notorious for pizza and rats, so, and coffee. There you go. So it fits nicely. Yeah. I liked the slug mechanic in the game. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it added a little something extra uh, that you, if somebody was getting close to winning, it was easy enough to get the slug to them knowing, you know, you'd have to definitely discard that card. Mm -hmm. I like that. Those are my favorite pieces. I have to agree. I think I like the art a lot. I do have some criticisms on it, though, but uh, we'll get back to that at the, the next portion of this review. Okay. Uh, but I do like the majority of the art in the game. I especially like the character art. I think the character art really pops if you can show uh, one or two of them off on the stream camera sure there. Sure can do. Um, the actual gameplay, it's, it's pretty concise. It's it, nothing that's overly difficult to grasp the concept of. Uh, it's a quick, fun game. Uh, there's really not much more I think I could say to that. I think Anne, you spoke to that pretty well. Also, you know, they, there is a quasi quick reference card, but I don't think that it fills out the category of quick reference card completely. It's just a nice reference on what the different variety of cards are in the game, not necessarily turn actions or anything to that effect. Uh, how about you, Josh? Um. <clears throat> kind of fill up you guys said kind of some of the stuff yeah I actually feel slightly different about the art but we'll talk about that in a second because mm -hmm. I actually as you said I do like the character cards but we'll talk about that more mm -hmm. um, it was a simple easy game easy to pick up for the most part um, I had fun with it but I have some negative sides of that that positives I know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain it. Like, I like the game. It was fun. There's just a little few negative things I would like fixed Anything? that would make it more fun for me. Okay. And, and that's why, like, I don't want to... I don't want to say a bunch of negative things. Like, I like it. There's just a couple things I wish were... Nitpicking on it. Different about yeah. it. What was to your... To make it more entertaining. Absolute favorite piece of the game. Giving you guys my slugs. <laughs> so you like the slug mechanic. You like the slug mechanic. Yeah, I like the slug mechanic. I like, I like the slug mechanic. I like... I like the boosters and the blockers a little bit 
and kind of wish there was more of it. Right. I think I would agree with that one. I mean, they give you extra cards and they say you put in it. I, I, I like think, that. I think the limit of what they have is just a little... I, I would like to see more. Like, I would like to see a lot more things I think would be more fun, like flavor tech. Like, like, they're not negatives, but like... To bring the game more enhancement. Like, enhancement. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. So, like, I, I don't want to say there's a bunch of negative things about the game. It's just, I would like it to come to life a little bit more for me. So, this is where I'm going to step in and talk about what I didn't necessarily care for. And this usually goes hand in hand with what I would change because I don't want to just give blind, you know, negative criticism to it. Mm -hmm. um, while I do like, I especially like the art on the character cards, the art on the trash cards is nice. I don't care for the art on the. Uh, character cards as much. That's the booster and blocker cards. The booster cards. and blocker cards? I feel like it's just a different art style. I think all these cards are different art style than the actual character, character cards. cards. I believe you're right there, yeah. yeah. The, the character cards look like a completely different art style. I really love the character art. Um, the actual booster and blocker, I just, I feel like the artwork doesn't necessarily fit with the yeah. rest of it. That I think all these cards don't fit with that art. These I'm okay with, though. I didn't even consider that it was two different art styles. I think I kind of looked at the character card, and then I, I got what my special ability was, and then dismissed it. Mm -hmm. Like, I enjoyed it and dismissed yeah, it. Yeah, you don't necessarily look at the character card all too much I'm just much saying, like, this game. is a very cartoony. These are very realistic style, and they just, to me, they they don't mesh well. Mm -hmm. Where I, I, And I want to compare this Mexico. to uh, Trash Pandas. And it's a totally different game, but it's still the trash theme. Right. And I think they did a lot theme-wise. The job was the thema thematically was a little thematically tighter. Thematically was one. a little tighter, and it looked clean. Oh, I'm sorry. Jumping back, something that I wanted to say in the positive section, though. Um, Anne touched on it briefly. She likes how all of the characters have their own preferred trash. Oh, each of them have their flavor text. I thought the detail, the attention to details, really right. Good. And the the thing that I like though is that they made it a preferred trash. They didn't go overboard and had each character have a different play mechanic, a different superpower, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I know a lot of games tend to go overboard with stuff like that, where each like they try to make everything so unique for each player that it gets confusing and diluted where you're not able to keep track of what everyone's ability is. So I like the fact that it was something that differentiates all the characters, but it wasn't anything that was, you know, pandemonium. Panda. -monium. Yes, thank you. But since you were talking about that, I love the flavor text on the character cards. Yeah. Yeah. I think if they put flavor text on the trash cards, and if they did something like, uh, what was the other game, that storage war game? Oh, oh uh, yes, Vault Wars. Vault Wars. Vault Wars. Vault Wars. Had it Unique flavor text, flavor text for each on every card. single card. It, it just so I'm not like oh I pulled another pop ball that I don't need. I, I, Even necessarily me, not on the trash cards. If they had flavor text on, on the, the boosters, boosters and, and blockers, blockers because yeah. those are more unique, it kind of gives yeah. you the ability to like cherish like a, them even more yeah. but like if i pick the soda can and like i'm like i don't even need another soda can but i at least got to read the flavor text and then like, it'd be something a little different yeah i just i could see that like this is a fun filler game i just like doing that would make it more enjoyable right not, not, not a, it's not negative that it doesn't have it it's just it would be more enjoyable if and that goes back to i know and you with your i'll let you say that one um this is isn't a quick reference guide right like that just it's not it says the dumpster contents and it lists the 12 items that you have and maybe i could no uh, i don't think your hands grow fast enough for you to have to keep track of what items <laughs> you have to get like oh I, I i don't know why you would use this i mean it's i would i would put it on the box or i would make one card with listing it yeah but I don't, I don't care. A quick reference guide there is to two me. Variants in here. I don't know if it. Oh, maybe it's for a different them. variant. I that's okay. a, that's an I that I could that I can understand. So we played one of the three variants of the. We played the, the main book. game in here, and then there's two other variants. Okay. I would have liked a quick quick reference guide that said, step one. Step one, step you have, two, you know, because I, I know you got confused a couple times on what if do you I do wanted if I to win? do the what if I no, do what if I lose well, the hybrid action. Oh yeah, Do which I one goes first? Draw both, you know, draw and then discard, which order? And... I mean, the game is fairly simple, so I'm sure that after playing it a couple of times, it's easy enough to pick up. Right, and you're also juggling the, the computer duties and everything there, so that adds a little bit of the uh, confusion, you know, confusion and inattentiveness. Yeah. 
I liked, I know this is out of order, I liked the dice mechanic. Mm-hmm. The dice, dice mechanic was, it was fun and nicely. interesting. It was, I like that. I would have liked if they, and this is nitpicky, is instead of making all the crowbars minuses and all the, the trash can lids pluses, mix them up. Right. So you didn't have to re-roll them. Right, that would be fine. But, Another nitpicky thing is, Josh, do you have any problems telling the two colors apart? No. I don't think that's a really? particular brand of oh, color blindness. Blue and green is not oh, I it's, me. it's red and blue? Oh, so that's why no, purple it's you have. purple and blue. Purple and blue, okay. Green and red. So I know that a lot of people have problems with green and blue color blinds. So you're either green or blue color means you see a little bit less green or a little bit less blue and things. Right. You don't confuse blue and green. That, no? that, that oh, okay. is not... Okay, unless so maybe, you unless you had extreme where you basically see black and white, then oh, maybe. I, but, okay, so that's valid then. So maybe that's why they went with the blue and green style. But style. I can still see the point. I mean, maybe a white and black dye just so it's completely different. Or even like on everyone. if it's garbage, I do like brown and white. Hmm. Or like brown and, and gray, like like dirty colors. Yeah, that would work. Uh, but that's again a, a nitpicky detail. Um, if I really want to get nitpicky, and this is completely, I, I think I would rather have seen a roach than a slug. In the garbage can? Yeah. Okay. I get that, and I know we're going over nitpicky. Yeah. I don't want to touch the roach card. <laughs> well, that's the point. <laughs> duly, duly noted. Um, anything else from you guys before I go to my last point? Um, no, I think that was everything. I mean, it really wasn't anything major that I would you know, really say bothered me about the game. It's just a few little tweaks here and there that I think really would have added to everything. And that does go with saying that I actually really did enjoy playing the game. Josh, I know I know exactly what you're getting at here, though. What is he getting at? Well, Josh, if, for all of you who are not too familiar with the stream or the broadcast, Josh is our rules monkey. So it is his job to go through the rule books to all the games that we play beforehand learn them, make sure that he knows them well, and then explain them to us beforehand for me and then on the stream for you. Yeah. And that gives us all a different level of depth of knowledge of the rulebook when we're playing. And that comes across uh, when we're, we're playing it as well. And I think that's, that's part of the reason we do it is to show the different stages of how well-versed you can be yeah. in this game when we're playing it. But with that, Josh is the one that has the job of sifting through the rulebook. So this is the rulebook. It's a decent size. It's what, a uh, third of the page mm -hmm. size rule book? And this is the pages. H how complicated was this game? Not very. And how at long all. did it take to explain? A, a minute? A minute or two. Like, yeah. Solid two minutes. I'm eight, gonna ask questions. It's eight pages. You did mention. To play the game that we just did. And it, it's more, it's wordy. It's. The order's a little out of place of how you would teach a game. I will agree with that because I was looking for the win condition, and I while you guys while you guys were starting up, and I was getting social media out, I wanted to re refresh myself on what the win condition was, and I wasn't looking in the right place. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had to kind of bounce. I thought maybe it was okay. Is it at the end of the instructions because you do right, things piece right. by piece, and yeah. it's in the beginning ish. Which is kind of, you typically explain the game by how you win, but the thing is they like kind of talked about all these different mechanics and then they went into their variants. And I would have at least taught the main game first. But you know, quite frankly, I hate rules to start off. Like, yeah. I hate rule books to start off with. That's a very tricky one. And, and I, rule books are really tough. Because oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's something that a lot of games struggle with is making a rule book that doesn't feel like it's a trudge to get through. Exactly. Yeah. Or... What if you don't have enough information for your rules? Yeah. Oh, that's that's worse. Yeah. And, and I agree. So it's just this is extremely wordy for it, and like some of the things could have been adjusted. could have been bullet points, and it was like a paragraph of text that you love. So all the act I do love, but like all the actions you can do after you do a thing, it should be like three bullet points. You could either draw one or two, discard one or two, or do the mix. But it's a paragraph of text, and I'm trying to read through the three things you can do through a paragraph of text. It makes it difficult that's not to say it was worded poorly or anything yeah. it's just written longhand versus shorthand yeah. and if there was a quick reference card or something i'd be like oh i think i got the idea from this quick reference card yep. boom this is what i need and this is what i could reference instead i'm looking at this textbook i'm like um, you only have one way of learning yeah. how to do it right um and, and that would have been nice um the other one little thing i wanted besides the rule book which 
it is what it is. I, I was able to understand the game. It just it took me a read or two to actually understand. Fully it. grasp it. Yeah. I would have liked the discard pile face up. Yeah. There was no right. point to the face down discard pile. I, I think I agree with that because you can't sift through. So you can't be like, okay, I discarded this card a few turns back, and maybe I want it back, or something to that effect. You have no idea what's down there, so you're basically going completely off of conjecture of what you think someone else might have put face down. And, and you, you have, have no idea what their sets they're collecting are. So unless they maybe were playing their already completed sets face up, and you know, okay, they're not going to be going for that, so maybe they're discarding something that's useful to me there. But there's such a variety of different items in the game, and you have no idea what anyone has unless you're going off of what you've given them and that's not that and there's no huge cards part there. of the game and there's no boost cards in there yeah so so that's like th there was like no point to touch the discard pile I would have liked an option to have more booster cards there is more cards and, and the rules say you can put in more you if put you okay. desire and th that was one of the things I didn't like for the rules like oh um, there's slug cards we recommend putting in four you can put in more like just tell me put in four slug cards and then, like, later on in variants or something, you can say you can add slug cards to increase the game difficulty or something. Like, it didn't need to be in the basic rule setup. Very nitpicky. It's, it's nitpicky, but, like, there was literally half a page about all these extra cards. Oh, so if you you're going through it the first time, you yeah. would have liked to say, okay, like a, like a quick start. It's a little information yeah. overloading. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, it's, again, nitpicky, but it just makes the game easier to pick up and play. Right. Um, if they had a quick start in here, that would have been nice. If yeah. it was just a, seriously a page, it just said, all right. You have expansive rules, but you are really just looking for some sort of quick start rules, either through a quick right. reference guide or through yeah. a specific quick start. I think a, ma a marriage of a quick reference card with that book would be ideal. Yeah. And again, it's, it's nit nitpicky kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I had fun with the game. I just think... They would have done really well with the kit on the back of the character. Like, the character cards are really big. Mm, they are. That would have been a good place to put. Oh, they could have put it on the front. There's room on the front. Yeah, there cards. is room on the front. Yeah. Like, above the character, beneath the... Something they would have had to, Yeah, you'd have to change the art, but yeah. I find it weird that they give the optional extra cards. Like, they couldn't decide how many it played best with, so they put that option on the players. I, I don't think that that's necessarily the case. I see what you're saying, but I think that the way that, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that it's worded as start with four, but you can adjust how many you want to use level. based on based on the Style level of difficulty play. that you want to play with. Right. And I actually thought that was really nice. Like, you can, a lot of times... Uh, they'll say, they put all the components in. So you're starting with me. I don't know how many are in there for the booster and the blocker cards. It's not many. Let's say that there's six. Just mm -hmm. I believe numbers. there is, actually. Um, Five and uh, seven. seven. Five. Close enough. So average is six. Average is six. That's for sure. There you go. Um, you, you say, you know, throw six in, but you don't have any way to adjust the difficulty level. And... This is really kind of a, if, if I feel like this is a very family friendly game. Like I'd play this with the kids, so it's nice that they're off the bat giving you an option to adjust the difficulty level of the game. I could, I could see why that's beneficial. Yeah, I figured I was gonna ask like if you were playing with your kids, would that be something you would do? Is kind of trim out some of the slug cards so it's less of a gotcha, ha ha, or. Yeah. Yeah, you can take I out the like cards. the slug mechanic. I think I wouldn't put in the blockers. I think the blockers mm -hmm. is probably more difficult than, than playing around with the slug card. How would you know? Um, I wouldn't. Yeah. But, like, I want to keep comparing this to Chesh. Like, just overall, like, I had fun with the game. Just if the overall theme and everything was a little bit more immersive for me, I would enjoy the game that much more. The flavor text? Mm -hmm. The flavor text. The, if the, the character cards went through with the regular cards. Yeah. yeah but like I love the flavor text, and each of the characters has a different story and a different little summary. I thought that was great. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that. I, if the whole game showed that kind of flavor to it. Because this is a quick 20-minute game. I'm not looking for a heavy strategy game or something. I'm looking yeah, at something yeah. that's fun to play. And just having that... Airiness to it. Airiness. And like, when we did Vault Wars, like, that isn't really my strong style game. But getting to read all those junk cards was fun. Was fun and entertaining. That was rather entertaining. And or I'm gonna be like, all right, we're gonna play this game, and I'm like, oh, I get to chuckle at these cards because I haven't looked at them for two months and I forgot what they said. It, it adds that little extra 
fun to the game. Narflick mentioned, and I guess echoed really, uh, with the adjustable booster and blocker cards. He's saying that it adds an extra set to step up. Like for me, I just nice. It'd be nice just to just pull out all the cards and be ready to play. And I think that's kind of our biggest little nitpick is that we were kind of looking for a quick start option. So mm -hmm. that goes back to if there was a quick start option or a quick reference guide, a way just to set it up and play right off the bat. And then in the rules go through. I mean, there's already variants there, mm -hmm. and that's where you put the additional information about adjusting the levels. Of the and cards. I think I think if all these cards started in there, it would make it a little bit more interactive, and, and it would have been perfectly fine, especially for our play level. It's yeah. a it's a rather it's large a, deck of cards yeah. too. Where there's, if you have it for kids, it would be I would understand wanting to have less cards. Yeah. Uh, there's a game. Uh, card game that days absolutely David's favorite card game in the whole wide world. Mm -hmm. So you guys know which one it is. And the rules are written such that you to set up the game. It says grab this card, this card, and that card, and set it aside, right. and then play the game. And after the end uh, of the regular rule play, it now says, "Hey, things. these are what the special things are with these cards." So that so might that's not have nice been a bad way to, way to add that in, also. Uh, but so otherwise, in a nutshell, the game has very solid mechanics. Yes. Uh, it was fun to play. Yes. It's just that a few tweaks here and there could have really added to the immersion of the experience and overall boosted the game in all of our opinions, I believe. Am I wrong in saying yeah. that? Uh, other than that, though, it was fun. That's the important thing. Uh, so thank you for joining us. This was our Twist Gaming Honest Review section of our Spotlight of Dumpster Brawl. So everyone go check that out. Otherwise, we will be signing off now. We hope to see you again for all of our future broadcasts. Uh, just the end of this broadcast. Don't end the actual streaming. Okay. But otherwise, thank you all for joining us. This is Twist Gaming signing off. I'm Matt. I'm Josh. And I'm Ian. Take care, everyone.